Hello everyone, this is geometry, topic eight, right triangles and trigonometry. Um, in this lesson, in this topic, we'll think about how the Pythagorean theorem and the trigonometry would be useful. Um, in algebra two, we'll use a lot of trigonometry. And so learning about Pythagorean theorem and its connection to trigonometry would be very useful in the future as well. So in this topic, we have five lessons total and some topic vocabularies include angle of depression, angle of elevation, cosine, law of cosines, law of sines, Pythagorean triple, sine tangent trigonometric ratios. So if you haven't learned trigonometry yet, this would be, this could be a little bit challenging, but it could also be a good introduction before you really learn um, the, all the methods of trigonometry algebraically. This would be more conceptual understanding, um, I would say, but you do have to use algebra in this topic as well. All right. So these are some STEM projects. Our lesson one is going to be right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem. So in this lesson, we'll be able to prove the Pythagorean theorem using similarity and establish the relationships in special right triangles. So the big vocabulary for this lesson would be the Pythagorean triple. Let's look at exploring reason. Consider triangle ABC with altitude um, CD as shown. That's the altitude, which means it's perpendicular to the side AB. And yeah. And so we know that the triangles formed from the altitude would be right triangles, right? So part A, what is the area of triangle A, B, and C? Uh, what about triangle ACD? Explain your answers. How do you find the area? You, you need a height and a base, right? Base times height divided by two. So if you have an altitude, that could be your height and that could be your base, right? But if you don't know how to get that, then you need an altitude here and that could be your base. And because that's 45 degrees, that's also 45 degrees, and that's a right triangle as well. So if you know um, the Pythagorean purple, it's very easy to figure out the other sides. But if you don't, this um, might take a while for you. But even if you don't know, um, it should be fairly easy because you already know the angle 45s are the same. So angles A and B are the same. So you know this is not an equilateral triangle, but it's an isosceles triangle. Also, it's a right triangle. But because these two angles are the same, the base angles are the same, you know that the sides are going to be the equal length, right? So AC have to be the same as BC. It needs to be congruent. So BC must also be 5 squared root 2. And if you know CD is an altitude, it divides the triangle ABC in half. So once you know the, the area of ABC, triangle ABC, uh, the triangle, uh, the area of either uh, of the smaller triangle would be half the area of the triangle ABC, right? So triangle ABC is going to be base times height and your base could be AC, height could be BC. So area is five, square root two square times it by two. That means you multiply five square root two by itself twice, and that's 25. And square root two times square root two is just two. But then you have to divide it by two um, because you're finding the area of the triangle, right? Base times height divided by two, divided by two. 
divided by two. So two divided by two could be canceled out. And so your area is 25. So area of ABC is 25 and ACD is, um, this is a semicolon, okay? Uh, is half of 25. So that's 12.5 square units. So let's write that down neatly, explain our answers. So 25 square units and 12.5 square units because triangle ABC is half of a square but side length five square root two, which has an area of 50 square units. Triangle ACD is a quarter of square or triangle ACD is of triangle ABC. Mm, you can't really see this, right? So I'm gonna move it here. Okay, this is part A. Okay, B, find the lengths of AD and AB. So how would you find the length of AD and AB? Use a Pythagorean theorem, right? Pythagorean theorem says that if you have a right triangle, your hypotenuse C is going to be, wait, and if your legs are A and B, Pythagorean theorem says that says that um, C square is equal to A square plus B square, where A and B are the legs and C is the hypotenuse. So using that, A B square is equal to A C square plus B C square. So we're gonna figure out A B first. AB square is five squared two square plus five squared two square again. And how do you solve this? Well, you uh, square five squared two first. You need to solve that one first, okay? So then you have 25 times two plus 25 times two which is equal to 50 plus 50, which is equal to 100. And that's AB squared, and that's not AB. So AB squared is 100, which means AB is square root 100. And so AB is 10, okay? So AB is 10, and AD should be half of that because it, it's the altitude um, comes from the right angle to the opposite side. And so it must divide um, A, B in half. So A, B is going to be five. All right, what about part C? Look for relationships. Divide the length of the hypotenuse of A, B, C by the length of one of its sides. Uh, divide the length of the hypotenuse of triangle A, B, A, C, D by the length of one of its sides. Make a conjecture that explains the results. Okay, we're gonna divide the length of the hypotenuse of ABC. So hypotenuse is AB, okay, which is AB, which is 10 by the length of one of its sides. So 10 divided by one of the sides, five squared two. And if we simplify, if we multiply five square root two, well, with square root two over square root two, just to rationalize your denominator, then we have 10 square root two over five times two. And that's 10 square root two divided by 10. And so if you cancel out 10, that's just square root two. 
Okay. What about divide the length of the hypotenuse of A, C, D? So hypotenuse is five over two, right? Five over two by the length of one of its sides. So AD we figured out is five, right? So five square root two divided by five is square root two. So both times we get square root two. If we divide length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle by the length of one of its sides, we should get square root two. Hmm, does that always work with all the right triangles? This triangle was also special because why? It was a right triangle and it was an isosceles triangle. Yeah, so the legs had to be equal to each other. So if your angles are 45, if your base angles are 45 degrees um, and your triangle is a right triangle, then the length of the hypotenuse divided by the length of a side should be square root two. And that is just one of the cool relationships of right triangles. So the length of the hypotenuse, I'm gonna write C under, under here, divided by a length of a side is square, square root two for both triangles. Both triangles are right triangles with two 45 degree angles. So our conjecture that the ratio of hypotenuse length to side length in a right triangle with two 45 degrees angles is square root two. Okay. How, where do I put this? Where do I put this? I'm gonna make it red so that it's super visible. Make it longer so that takes up less lines. That is right. Okay. Yeah, this is part C. All right, are you ready to learn more about right triangles and trigonometry? So we're gonna link right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem together and see the similarity. Okay, so remember that the Pythagorean theorem and its converse describe how the side lengths of the right triangles are related. So here's the theorem, uh, A-1 Pythagorean theorem. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So basically Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then theorem A-2 converse, says if, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then it's a right triangle. So if we don't know if it's a right triangle and we want to prove it, we can go backwards. We can use Pythagorean theorem backwards. And that's the converse of Pythagorean theorem, okay? So keep that in mind. Here's the proof in example one. We're going to use the similarity to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So use the right triangle similarity to write a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Given triangle XYZ is a right triangle, we're gonna prove that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. How do we prove Pythagorean theorem? Well, we start from the information that the triangle is a right triangle. So to prove it, we're gonna draw the altitude to the hypotenuse like we had in the, in the explore section. Um, and then we're gonna use relationships in the resulting similar right triangles there. Okay, so step one, draw the altitude XW and then we have similar right triangles made. Triangles 
X, y, uh, X, y, Z is similar to uh, triangle W, X, Z and triangle W, Y, X, okay? And step three, because they're similar, we can say that um, we can say that C over A is equal to A over E. That's the mean, right? And so A squared is equal to C E. That's the mean. So step four, because triangle X Y Z is is similar to W X Z, um, then we can say C over B, they must be proportional to B over F. And B is going to be the mean, uh, geometric mean. And so B squared is, is equal to C F. Okay. So that was from last topic, right? So step five, we're going to write an equation that relates A squared and B squared to C E and C F. So a squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, but C squared is going to be instead C E plus C F because B squared, uh, wait, C squared is, is actually A squared plus B squared, right? So instead of C squared, we're just gonna rewrite, substitute A squared to C E and then substitute B squared to C F. Okay, and that should equal to C squared, right? And then, so if we, if we factor C out and we get A squared plus B squared equals C squared, that's what we actually want, right? So we prove the Pythagorean theorem. If we have a right triangle, then we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so try at number one. We're gonna find the unknown side length of each right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So find AB, that's the hypotenuse. And part B, find EF, that's one of the legs. And ED is the hypotenuse. So use the Pythagorean theorem to figure it out by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So use um, the Pythagorean theorem and say, oh, that could be A and that could be B. It doesn't have to be. They, that 15 could be A, 12 could be B, but they just have to be either side, okay? And that could be C. So we're gonna figure out A, B, right? So A, B squared is equal to 12 squared plus 15 squared. If we know that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And so, we're gonna, we're gonna multiply out. We have to square them first before adding them. So 12 square is 144. Don't forget the square sign. We have to square root it later. 144 plus 15 square is 225. So if you add them together, AB square is equal to 369. And what is uh, square root of 369. It's not a nice little whole number, but that's going to be three and square root 41 if you simplify it, okay? 369 divided by three is one, two, three. So because you have three times one, two, three, and then 123 divided by three is 41. So you can say three times three times 41 is 369. And 41 is a, is a prime number. So you can't really divide by anything. Um, yeah, and so you can simplify as three square 41. And that's it. Your AB is three square 41. That's your answer, okay? Yeah, simplify it if possible. And part B, EF is going to be the other side. And that's C, that could be A, that could be B. So C squared is already uh, given, right? So your hypotenuse squared, 10 squared, is going to be A squared, your EF squared plus seven squared. Okay, 
So then you're solving for EF. So um, 10 square is 100 is equal to EF. 7 square is 49. And so in order to figure out EF, you need to isolate it. So 100 minus 49 is equal to EF square. And that's equal to 51. And uh, so EF is simply square 51. Can you simplify that? Not really. So you can just leave it as square root 51. OK? Yeah, that's it. So that was example one, try it. Let's look at the next page. Example two, use the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Part A, to satisfy safety regulations, the distance from the wall to the base of the ladder should be at least one fourth the length of the ladder. Okay, the length of the ladder here is the hypotenuse in the, on the right triangle we see. The Jew set up the ladder correctly. Okay, so distance from the wall is 2.5. Is it at least one fourth the length of the ladder? Well, we need, to, we need to first figure out the length of the ladder, right? So we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem and figure out C squared, the hypotenuse, and C is about 9.34. And the question is, did Drew set up the ladder correctly? So in other words, is 9.34, is the fourth of 9.34 2.5? Is 2.5 at least one fourth of the length of the ladder, which is 9.34, okay? So find the, uh, wait, yeah, so find the one fourth of the length of the ladder. That's 2.335. Is 2.5 greater than that or equal to? Yes, yes. So he set up the ladder correctly and it's safe. Okay, so that is the final answer. Part B, the length of each cross piece of the fence is 10 feet. Okay, the cross piece, each one. So that's 10 feet. Why would a rancher build this fence with the measurements shown? Okay, we got six feet, six foot high and uh, eight feet long. The numbers six and eight and 10 form a Pythagorean triple. That means these must be right triangles. Pythagorean triple is your vocab. It's a set of the uh, three non-zero whole numbers to satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So since six squared plus eight squared is equal to 10 squared, the post, the ground, and the cross pieces form right triangles. And that's how we know, oh, they're, they're, the posts are perpendicular to the ground as well, because they must be right triangles, right? Yeah, so by using those measurements, the rancher knows that the fence posts are perpendicular to the ground, which is very important. If it's not, it's gonna, it's gonna go down eventually. Um, it's gonna fall apart, which stabilizes the fence, okay? So try number two, A and B. What is KL? And part B is triangle M and O, a right triangle. Explain. See if you can answer these by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, so using the Pythagorean theorem part A, what is KL? Nine square plus 40 square must be KL square. So 81 plus 1060. 1,600 uh, should be KL squared, okay? So if you square root 1681, that should be KL. And that is about, that is exactly 41, okay? Part B is triangle M and O of right triangle. You can check if the hypotenuse, the longest side, is uh, satisfies the Pythagorean triple, right? 37, we don't know, 
is, is it equal to 35 square plus 12 square? 37 square is 1,369. 35 square is 1,225. And 12 square is 144. Um, and we still don't know. But 144 plus 1,225 is equal to 1,369. So yes, it's a right triangle be because it satisfies the equation M, M N M. Oh. <laughs> Let me write that again. Wait, I highlighted it. M N squared plus M O squared is equal to N O squared. Okay, so we still have three more examples to go, but I'll stop this video here and you can go ahead and review, um, but I'll continue in the next video.